Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Amanda. What's up? So in today's video, we are going to be sewing. Uh, so this is the first of many crafting videos that I want to do on my channel. Um, so I craft a lot. Like I sew, I cross stitch, I knit, but I have been really into sewing lately. So I kind of want to do like a sewing Thing on my channel so I want to make a series of videos of me sewing a dress for people who are like new to sewing and like want to get into it and like kind of need like a step-by-step -step. you know what I mean I feel like that would be kind of fun to do so this is the first video of my series of me sewing a dress let's get into it okay so to start out this is the pattern that I'm going to be using for this video it is a McCall's pattern M7431 it is a dress pattern that has I think four different dresses that you can make yeah so it's super cute um, I think this was $20 I want to say it was $20 at Joann's then for supplies we have this fabric it smells kind of weird because I haven't washed it yet um, but it's like a cotton fabric but it's like it's softer than like normal cotton and it's also like kind of like woven like you could see that it's like a little see-through um, I thought that this would be kind of cute um, and give it kind of like a denim look without having to sew actual denim because denim is like really hard to sew then we also have some interfacing so we have three and three-fourths of a yard of this but I actually bought four yards just to be safe because I always buy a little bit extra just in case because you never know you know if you're gonna run out of fabric and screw something up so we have four yards of this fabric and then we have three-fourths of a yard of interfacing this is like the one of the thinnest um, interfacings that you could get so yeah if you do not know what interfacing is since this is like a beginner video it's the stuff that you like iron onto fabric to make it a little bit thicker. So if you feel like the collar of your button up shirt, it feels a little bit thicker than the actual shirt itself. And that's because it has interfacing on it to make it a little bit stiff and more like, you know, stiff. Then I also bought some thread that looks like the color of the fabric that I'm using so that you can't really see the thread once I sew it. We also have some elastic. This is a fourth of an inch elastic band. Um, I'm assuming that this is going to be used for the little, like the waist that you see there. Um, but you know, we'll figure that out. And then we have some large silver eyelets. Um, that is what is going to make the little like tie thing that you see in the photo. Um, so yeah. Those are the supplies, and this is the machine that we are using. <laughs> I'm holding up a whole freaking machine. Um, but this is my sewing machine. I love my, my sewing machine, baby. Um, it is a brother sewing machine. Um, I really want to get like a Singer or a Bernina, but we have a brother. So this is the bad boy that we are using for this project. So in today's video, we are just going to be cutting out the pattern, going over the different features of the pattern so that you guys can see how I usually read patterns and how I, you know, cut out the fabric because there is, it can be a little bit confusing. It can be like really confusing because the instructions aren't very clear all the time. So we're going to go over some sewing basics today and then in the next video, we will go ahead and get started using the actual machine and piecing stuff together. So let's get started. Okay, so this is the pattern that we are using. It is the McCall's M7431. It comes with four different dresses. You could tell that by the front image. It has the four dresses labeled, so A, B, C, and D. So I chose this pattern just because I really liked the way that this dress looked with like the waistband and the cute little ties. So then when you flip the pattern over, you can see more of the details on the back of it. So as you can see, whoop. It was $19.95, that's the price up there. And then right here, if my camera will focus, which I don't think it freaking will, um, I'll insert an image of it here. But these are the different sizes and the 
amount of fabric that you will need based on the size that you are making. So if you look at the image up on the screen right now, I am making a size 12, so I need three yards or three and three fourths of a yard, but I bought four just to be safe. So, um, and those little, the numbers that are next to the A, the 45 and the 60, that is how many inches wide your fabric is. And how you can check that is on the little cardboard box that your fabric comes in. It'll say on the side of it 45, 44, 43, etc., etc. Usually the standard for regular cotton fabrics or just like regular on the roll fabrics, they're usually always 45 inches, but you should still check just to be safe because I've accidentally bought like 43 inches and then the um, pattern calls for 45, which most patterns do, and I run out of space. So if that is the case, it's always safe to buy an extra yard just to be safe. So now that you have bought the fabric that you need, you need to look at the notions. So the notions are listed here. I will also insert a photo. It says... For patterns A, C, and D, you will need 1 and 1 fourth yards of a fourth inch elastic. For pattern A, you will need 16 eyelets. Pattern B, 5 1 and a half inch buttons, etc, etc. So, depending on which pattern you are making, the notions is what you're going to need to make that pattern. So, because I am making dress A, I need 1 and a fourth yards of 1 fourth inch elastic and 16 eyelets. Then right above it, it says fusible interfacing A, B, C, and D. So interfacing, like we talked about earlier, interfacing is just a fabric that you iron on to a another fabric so that it makes it a little bit thicker. So I went ahead and bought the 20 inch um, really thin fusible interfacing and it says to get 3 fourths of an inch of that. So I went ahead and got 3 fourths of an inch because usually you don't have to get extra interfacing. It'll always kind of work out. Um, but if you want to be extra safe, then you could always get extra. So that is basically all the information on the back. It also has the final measurements for you. So if you don't know what size you want to make, um, it gives you the different measurements, like the bust measurements, the hip measurements, lower edge, base of neck, etc. So if you're making a custom dress for someone and you want to make sure that it fits perfectly, you can go ahead and take their measurements and use that as a reference for which size you're going to make. But I'm usually always like a size 12 in dresses, so I'm making a size 12. And yeah, I'm just hoping that it'll work out. So that is the pattern. Now let's go ahead and open it up so you guys can see what the actual pattern on the inside looks like. Okay, so when you open up the pattern, this is what comes with it. This is your little instruction guide. This is going to be very, very helpful for actually assembling everything. And then this is your pattern. So it's on this really thin tissue paper. Um, it's like easily workable. And just a PSA, see how nicely folded it is? It's never going to look like that ever again. It's like physically impossible to get it all folded back nicely. So, you know, we're just, it's fine. It's whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and open this all up and then I'll show you all of the details after. Okay, so this is the pattern laid out. It looks messy as hell. Um, I didn't lay out that yet because I don't have a lot of room in here. So, <laughs> but okay, I'm just going to use this piece as an example. So this looks kind of confusing. Like there's a lot happening right now. But this is what you need to know. Okay, so first of all, you have this, right? This is your little instruction book. So in the instruction book, it gives you a lot of information about the actual pattern and how to read it. So if this video doesn't do it justice, there are instructions here on how everything works, which I will insert a photo because my camera is being stupid and won't focus. But anyways, so in this instruction book, it will tell you what pieces you need for whichever garment that you're making. Um, it also tells you on the actual pattern, like this one says it's pattern piece number two. It is the back of A, B, C, and D. So every single pattern will need this. So depending on what size you are making, it depends on where you are going to cut. So as you can see here, a size 14, will be cut here, 16 here, 18 here, 20, 22. 
So this is for the bigger sizes. So the main thing that you need to know with this is when you cut out your actual pattern, you're gonna wanna cut directly on that line, maybe a little bit past it. So say if you're making a size 14, you're gonna wanna cut about right there. So that way you can really nest all of the pieces onto your fabric. So if you don't have enough fabric, then you want to make sure that you are cutting as close to that line as possible so when you lay out your pieces on the actual fabric you have enough space if that makes sense <laughs> um also these little dots right here when you have your pattern pieces pinned on your fabric and you're ready to cut your fabric don't forget to take a sharpie or a pen and go ahead and poke through the actual pattern and do a little like dot because this is going to help you line everything up as well as these the little darts so usually what I do when I see these is I will be cutting 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 and I'll be like oh there's a diamond and then I'll go boop 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 and I'll make little shark teeth going the opposite way cutting out so that'll also help you line everything up they're really really useful like I know it seems like a little like random thing that isn't that important but it's actually like makes your life so much easier so just like take the time to cut them out it'll be worth it I promise and they're gonna be hidden in your seam allowance anyway so let's go ahead and move on to looking at the actual instruction book and what all of this has to say okay all right so this is the first page of instructions laid out so basically what's on this first page is it'll give you all the info about the pattern like I mentioned before how to read it the whole grain line thing, all of that jazz. So that's another important thing that wasn't on that pattern piece, but on some of them, it'll have this little arrow that you see right here, which I will insert a photo of. That is the grain line arrow. So what that means is that needs to be along the selvage edge of your fabric. The selvage edge of your fabric is the rough looking one that either says like the brand of fabric that it is, or it's like rough and kind of like ripped off. That is your selvage edge. So you're going to want to make sure that that is lined up with that so that the flow of your pattern works. Then the place on fold line, that literally just means place that arrow, the little arrows that are pointing to the edge, place that on a fold so that way when you fold it open it'll be double sided. Um, there are also little markings like the circles and stuff which you should definitely mark because a lot of those are important and they mean something. So mark all of them to be safe. Anyways, so this right here is the cutting layout so these honestly ignore <laughs> they are so confusing and they will drive you nuts i haven't been sewing for very long and i used to like when i first started out i would look at these patterns and i would be like okay i need to place it exactly like that but honestly it doesn't really matter <laughs> like as long as you place it all and you get them all cut with like the correct direction of your fabric like you're fine you don't need to look at all this fancy placement just what you're going to want to do when you actually cut it out which i'll explain more next is you're going to want to fold the fabric with the pretty side in and the ugly side out so you want to place all of your pattern pieces pinned on the ugly side of your fabric um that is just how it's always been done i feel like it doesn't really make a difference but i don't know that's how i was taught then if we flip this over it actually has some of the instructions so sewing instructions can be very very confusing like the language that they use is like just insanely confusing and the images aren't always clear like at all so if you get confused do not fret okay there are probably a million youtube videos that you could watch teaching you um but obviously i'm gonna go through step by step with you guys anyways um, so you'll be able to learn all these different steps and all the different lingo and all of that jazz. So when we actually get into sewing, this will all make a lot more sense. Then we have another page of instructions, which is just like the second half of making the garment. It's pretty much just the exact same thing, just the images with the explanations, step by step. So yeah, those are the instructions. These are the pattern pieces. This is what the pattern comes in so what you need to do now is figure out first of all open this all up figure out which pieces you need which pieces you don't cut out the pieces that you need and set them aside so that you can attach it to fabric and then cut the fabric 
So what we're going to do right now is we're going to figure out which pieces we need, cut them out, and then I will see you once they are all cut out and ready to go. Um, I hope that it was helpful. Um, so I will see you guys next week with the other part of this video where I actually start cutting out the fabric and sewing it. So yeah, um, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every Monday and Wednesday. Um, and go ahead and give this video a like if it was helpful and comment down below any questions that you may have. Um, I will put all of the products that I use in this video in the description down below, so if you want to buy the stuff that I use, it will be there. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys on Wednesday.